Good evening, I'm Lena Hassanel. Welcome to BizWorld. Malaysia continues to be the focus of global manufacturers' investment when Japanese firm Tayo Yudin invested 680 million ringgit in a ceramic capacity production facility in Kuching, Sarawak. Senior International Trade and Industry Minister Datuk Sri Muhammad Azmin Ali said the investment is expected to generate 2,000 high skill jobs. In a statement, he said the major investment bodes well for national investment aspirations, which aims to ensure that Malaysia stays at the forefront as a global hub for quality investments. He added this can be realised through increasing economic diversity, creating high-skill jobs and addressing economic imbalances, in line with the National Shared Prosperity Vision commitment. Last year, a total of 2,761 manufacturing projects with Japanese participation had been implemented in industries such as electrical and electronics, chemicals, non-metallic, mineral products and transport equipment. Going forward, Dato Sri Azmin said Malaysia is confident that foreign direct investments will continue to flow into the country in spite of the challenging global economic landscape. The Employees Provident Fund EPF recorded more than 34 billion ringgit total investment income for the first half of the year, a 25% increase compared to corresponding period in 2020. However, total gross investment income for the second quarter was 14.7 billion ringgit, lower than 15.1 billion ringgit recorded in the same quarter last year. To date, both ICNR and ITRA facilities have registered a total of 67.6 billion ringgit disbursement. On the outlook, EPF said it is very concerned on the retirement security of the people, especially with 46% of its members below the age of 55 having less than 10,000 ringgit in their account. Meanwhile, the pandemic has led to a significant drop from 36% to only 27% of members, meeting the basic savings threshold of 240,000 ringgit at age 55. What makes Selangor one of the most attractive investment destinations in this region? What's the strategy to entice more investors to the Golden State? And what are the high potential sectors for its future growth? Selangor State Executive Councillor for Industry and Trade, Dato Teng Chang Kim, speaks to Money Matters on opportunities in Malaysia's most developed state this Saturday at 5 p.m. only on Tiga. Equity Nasional Berhad, Equinas, with the cooperation of 14 state zakat entities, will allocate 10 million ringgit to help 4,000 micro and small Bumiputra enterprises hit by the pandemic crisis. From that, 1.5 million ringgit has been dispersed to zakat management entities in three states, namely Selangor, Kedah, and Pulau Pinang. Kebanyakan bisnes-bisnes ini kalau nak cakap tak maju pun tak betul, kerana selama uh... MCO mereka memang tak boleh beroperasi right mana bisnes pun kalau tak boleh beroperasi selama beberapa bulan kita akan terjejas so insyaallah dengan bantuan sedikit sebanyak daripada kami dia akan membawa uh, akan memberi necessary for capital for them to uh, to restart or rejuvenate their business through its Iltizam Entrepreneur Mentor Program or Ihsan, Equinas will provide a one-off financial assistance of 2,000 ringgit to each business in the next eight months. This will serve as a working capital as well as operational expenses such as rental, salaries and utilities. Malaysia's inflation, as measured by the Consumer Price Index, CPI, increased 2% in August from a year earlier. According to Chief Statistician Dr. Sri Muhammad Uzir Mahidin, this was due to 2020 base effect and a rise in CPI components. He said the transport group continued to record a double-digit increase since March after it rose 11% in August. The food and non-alcoholic beverages segment was up by 1.2% in August as against 1.3% in the previous month. Year-to-date, the CPI increased 2.3% between January and August 2021 from a year earlier. That's all for BizWorld today. I'm Lena Hassanel. Thank you for watching and keep tuning in to TV Tiga.